Hello and welcome back. We are moving on through our chapter 13 study on viruses. So this next video we're going to focus on bacteriophages and their life cycles. I guess you can call them life cycles. Um, there's two different types of bacteriophages we're going to cover. We're going to take a look at lytic replication cycles and lysogenic replication cycles. So remember bacteriophages are viruses that infect just bacteria. They're very specific for their host. Um, and then they basically turn the bacteria into a virus making factory. So let's take a look at how these two groups of bacteriophages do that. So this first one is called a lytic replication and we're gonna follow the bacteriophage called T4. So T4 bacteriophage um, is probably one of the most commonly studied. It was probably I think the first bacteriophage that was identified um, and readily studied and it targets E. coli and which was one of the first bacteria that was readily studied. So that kind of makes sense. So if we're going to look at its structure, again, those two component parts, what is a virus? Well, it's got its capsid and it's got its genome, right? The DNA, these are DNA viruses, they're double-stranded DNA viruses. But again, those bells and whistles for bacteriophage, it has this tail sheath, the tail fibers, the base plate, and those all um, play a part in recognition of their host cell. So as the tail fibers and the base plate land, what happens is that tail sheath almost acts like a hypodermic needle and that extends um, this little projector through like kind of what we can see here and injects the viral genome into the bacteria everything else gets left on the top it's done its job it's basically just the carrier the attacher and the injector the viral genome is what the virus needs to make more of itself um, and so this was if you Maybe or may not remember way back if you learned in BY211 talking about how they discovered that the DNA was actually the molecule of heredity and not the protein um, because it was an argument, is it DNA, is it protein, is it DNA, which one of these complex molecules um, are, is the hereditary information? And with uh, experiments with bacteriophages, they discovered it was the DNA, the nucleic acid, which was allowing the viruses to replicate, not the protein coat that was left outside. So the first step in this cycle um, is attachment. All right, so we're going to attach so that we kind of see this in that um, expanded picture there and entry. So that's the hyperdermic injection of the genome into the bacteria. Then there's a trigger in the cell with the, the arrival of this phage DNA. Phage just is a um, shortened version for bacteria phage, just an abbreviation. What happens is the host chromosome gets broken apart. And we saw this back in chapter seven in the transduction method of horizontal gene transfer where some of that bacterial genome accidentally gets incorporated into the bacteriophage. Um, this is how that's happening. So now we're learning exactly the steps of bacteriophage infection, uh, bacteriophage infection. But we're just gonna ignore that. That's kind of the exception to the rule. So once we have the phage DNA in the cell, it kind of, once it degrades the host chromosome, there's nothing left for the bacterial replication machinery to do but to replicate the phage itself. So here we have the synthesis phase. So this synthesis is transcription and translation of the viral genome. So it comes in as double-stranded DNA. It has to be transcribed by the host's uh, RNA polymerase into mRNA. The mRNA is then translated by the host ribosomes into proteins. And what are the proteins it's making? Well, it's making the proteins that are going to make the base and the tail and the sheath and the capsid. So all of that is happening at the transcription translation phase. Then if we're going to assemble and make more viruses, we have to make more of our genome. We, only, we started with one copy, one copy of phage DNA. We have to make more of that. So then it's going to use the host cell's DNA replication machinery, right? So like helicase and topoisomerase and the single-stranded binding proteins and the DNA polymerase and the ligase and all the stuff that you learned back in BY211, the viruses hijack that to make more of the genome, to make more of the DNA. So that's step three. They're just making viral parts and pieces. And then step four is assembly. Then all of these parts and pieces, pieces amazingly just what we call self-assemble. So by chemical interactions, hydrophobic, hydrophilic, ionic, whatever those attractions are, um, allows for the genome, right, to be housed inside the capsid protein, the tail and the middle part and the base plate and the fibers and all of those 
self-assemble into mature, what we call virions when it's on the inside. And then step five is release. So when enough of these bacteriophages fill this bacterial cell, it pops it open, it bursts it open. And so this is the end result. One bacteriophage goes in, thousands of bacteriophages come out ready to infect any neighboring bacteria. This is the reason why lytic bacteriophages are used or looked at in that bacteriophage therapy because they destroy the bacteria. If that bacteria is your pathogen, these bacteria, bacteriophages are your friends. Okay, so that is the lytic replication cycle. With that, you can measure how many viruses you have and you can um, kind of measure their time and size. These are called burst time and burst size. So let's say we have that one bacteriophage that lands on the one E. coli. And so it's sitting on the outside and then it goes in. We don't count it anymore because now it's inside of the cell. So that's why it's gone down to zero because that DNA of the virus is now inside of the cell. And then this is where those steps two and three or four or whatever, um, synthesis and assembly. Okay, So we're synthesizing new proteins, we're synthesizing new DNA and then assembling or Paul putting it together. And then when enough of that has enough viruses have been put together, then it's bursting out of the cell. And this is what we call burst time. And now we can see if we look at our scale from one bacteriophage entering about 25 to 30 minutes later, we have, since this is a log scale, probably about 5,000, no, 500 um, viruses out of one cell. So one virus into 500 in about 25 minutes. So Again, that's going to change from virus to virus, but that might be a typical burst time and burst size um, for measuring these lytic replication cycles. Okay. Now let's take a look at the lysogenic replication. So lysogenic, the example we're going to use is what's called the lambda bacteriophage. It looks very similar. It's got its capsid. It's going to have the DNA inside, but then it just has the sheath. It doesn't have the tail fibers and the end plates like we saw um, in the T4 bacteriophage. And it starts off very similar. So we have attachment, we have entry, um, and then we have where it goes off different. Okay, So this is where the lysogenic differs from the um, lytic. And so instead of getting into um, the synthesis and assembly, it goes into almost like a dormant stage. And in the lysogenic replication cycle, what happens is the bacteriophages genome gets incorporated into the bacterial chromosome. And now once it does that, we call it a prophage. A prophage word in there. So prophage is the name for the viral genome that is now incorporated as part of the bacterial chromosome. So then it just kind of hides out, but it's not un unactive, I guess. I don't know if that's inactive. So as this bacteria, unbeknownst to it, not that it has sentience, but we'll just say that, that it is replicating just like it normally would. So one cell becomes two, two, four. So we've got this exponential growth. And after multiple replications, you have all of these bacteria just going about their day, but incorporated within their chromosome is the viral genome, this prophage. And then for whatever reason, it could be a nutritional reason, it could be an environmental reason like oxygen levels or UV light or something triggers what we call induction. Okay. So induction is the popping out of the prophage, dis destruction of the host chromosome, right? So we're destroying all of the bacterial DNA, and then we just pop back into the lytic cycle. So we now have our viral genome ready to go. We've destroyed our bacterial genome. We can do our synthesis, assembly, and release. But this may be like 15 hours later. This could be 10 days later. This could be five years later from your original infection. However many times the bacteria replicated, each one of those bacteria is basically replicating the viral genome for the virus, and then um, it will get inducted and produce way more and actually make more of the viruses many generations later. So kind of a little sneaky um, bacteriophage. All right, so those are our two cycles of bacteriophage replication, the lytic, which is a quick uh, infection and burst and lysogenic, which is kind of a slower dormant phase, and then it, it will all come out um, a later bursting of the host cell once the induction takes place. 
Um, making sure I look at my notes. Okay, so that's that. The next thing we're gonna take a look at is um, animal virus replication. I have a handout. I'm gonna post it if I haven't done so already. I'll show you what it looks like if we were in class. I guess I'll have it in my book. So it's gonna look like this. So biosynthesis of DNA and RNA animal viruses. So uh, print this off if you want to or follow along. I'm gonna be drawing pictures on the screen, um, kind of illustrating some of the processes of animal virus replication. So that's where we're headed next. Okay, I'll see you next time.